Good morning, dear friends and subscribers, and welcome to the Cricket Happening Show today. Well, your host Ram is once again here. As promised, I am back with the uh, preview of the World Cup 2012. So you'll be seeing three shows coming in. This is my first show today, and I'm starting off with Group B, doing the preview of the World Cup T20 World Cup 2012. Starting off with Group B. In the Group B consists of West Indies, Australia and the associate qualifier Ireland. Well, let's look first at the Australian squad. Now looking at the Australian squad, Australia, well, uh, they had a sort of a mixed series against uh, Pakistan in the United Arab Emirates. So one has to, uh, I mean, they definitely finished on a high, I mean, uh, not a high in the sense, they definitely uh, did a good thing by crushing Pakistan in the last match which would have really boosted their morale and they also you know they were actually um, uh, with Ireland below Ireland but now again after winning that match at least they have gone above Ireland so that is something uh, a sort of a psychological uh, win for them there um, and looking at the squad as far as Australia are concerned well Australia is led by a very young captain George Bailey uh, uh, he's a very, very confident young uh, person. Uh, the Australian selectors have uh, got a lot of trust in him and I'm told he's a very, very intelligent captain. So we will all be seeing that when the T20 uh, World Cup match starts in Sri Lanka. So George Bailey has a real test. And if he can prove something here, uh, he would have a very, very, uh, I mean, uh, a long tenure uh, in, the, in the Australian team. So George Bailey, uh, especially T20 captain leading Australia for the first time in this uh, T20 World Cup. So good luck to him. Well, looking at the team here, uh, they have uh, Daniel Christian. Now Daniel Christian is a very good all-rounder. Um, I mean, he, he's a bits and pieces, a bits and pieces uh, player uh, who does all the work for Australia. Uh, Patrick Cummins, raw pace. Now whether raw pace is something uh, that is uh, uh, in 2020 cricket, uh, you need to have a good line and length. Uh, as, as far as you bowl uh, lots of pace, well, sometimes the batsman can really use the pace of the ball and send it uh, 13 to the fence, and probably you might have wickets too. But again, Patrick Cummins has to bowl a good line and length. That is would be important. Uh, let's let's go let's go like this. Let's look at the batting first, and then come to the bowling. Looking at the batting. Uh, they have the openers David Vaughan and Shane Watson in good form after the crushing victory against Pakistan. So they would like to carry that on. And uh, Mickey Stewart has already made a point that uh, David Warner and Shane Watson are the ones who have to lay the foundation. They have to give them some very good starts, which is very, very essential for the other batsmen to come and capitalize. Now, then we have the, uh, the, uh, the then we have Michael Hussey uh, in the team, Michael, the Hussey brothers. The Hussey brothers uh, come and uh, strengthen the middle order. Michael Hussey is more of a nudger, but uh, when uh, one, once uh, things settle down, he could be quite dangerous because he can really hit some big shots. David Hussey, well, he, he is a very intent, um, a player who is always intent on hitting the ball and uh, tries to go over the top uh, right from the beginning. Now they also have uh, the, uh, then they have uh, the uh, Cameron White is the all-rounder in the team. Now Cameron White has been in some good form in the IPL. Uh, so he has to recreate that uh, particular form back into this T20 World Cup for Australia. And then let's all look at that very, very good talent which is coming in from Australia who did a fantastic job as far as the Australia-Pakistan series was concerned and really, really look out for this bloke. His name is Glenn Maxwell. Glenn Maxwell holds the record for the Australian record for the fastest 50 in domestic Australian domestic history. Well, so that person has to be respected and Glenn Maxwell really showed glimpses of that against Pakistan. So Glenn Maxwell is another one to watch for as far as this T20 World Cup is concerned because uh, the way he plays his strokes, it's really good to see. Uh, he has uh, lots of variety of strokes. He also uh, hits the ball hard. He can also go either side uh, very hard and hit the ball to the ropes and also over the ropes. So that is one thing to say. And then uh, let's look at the, as far as all-rounders are concerned, it's Cameron White uh, and Cameron White, and then they have the wicketkeeper Matthew Wade also chip in with his batting. And then we look at the bowling. Bowling, as I said, Patrick Cummins, 
Uh, ben Hilfenhaus is a good bowler. He, he, he bowls a good line and length. It will be very essential. Clint McKay is also a very good bowler. But Mitchell Stark, who did very well against Pakistan, the United Arab Emirates, uh, bagging the uh, man of the series, would be the one to watch for because he could be quite a proposition because uh, he angles the ball into the bat. And uh, as long as he bowls a very tight line, uh, I think the batsman would find it very uh, difficult to actually uh, face to Mitchell Stark, but he was pr pretty, pretty impressive there. And Clint McKay, also a very good one-day bowler. And uh, well, I think Aust and uh, look at the spinners. As far as the spinners are concerned, they have uh, left-arm spinner Xavier Doherty. But uh, well, one has to really keep an eye on Brad Hogg. Uh, he's coming into this T20 World Cup, made a comeback, and uh, he would be a man to watch for because uh, let me tell you, age has not withered him. He bowls very well. And uh, I'm, he has some very good balls. I mean, he can really, really surprise the batsman, and he can really, really frustrate the batsman. So let's look out for them. And Australia look good. Uh, I'll, I'll come to that later. Now I'm going to turn the attention from here. This is as far as the Australian team is concerned. Now I'm taking you. I'm, I'm going to do the preview of the West Indies squad. Now West Indies, as you know, of late they have been having some good performances. There's a lot of talk going on, a lot of hype going on. Uh, even if you ask the experts, they say that uh, West Indies are firm, not firm favourites, they are favourites. They are definite contenders this time for the World Cup 2012 because everybody has an eye on West Indies. The reason being, they are stocked with all-rounders. Look at the all-rounders that they have. Darren Sammy, the captain, who leads the way, is a determined person, leads the way and aggressive. Uh, he likes to he'll motivate the team and he is the one who leads by example, according to me. <coughs> and part of the West Indies' success has been uh, due to Darren Sammy, the captain of the West Indies. Uh, look at the all-rounders that they have. They have Dwayne Bravo back into the mix. Dwayne Bravo is an all-rounder. Then they have uh, Chris Gale also can be classified as an all-rounder because he bats. No, he's an explosive batsman, but also comes in and bowls. And then Kieran Pollard, what a smasher he is. And then we have Andre Russell, another all-rounder. Marlon Samuels is an all-rounder. Dwayne Smith is an all-rounder. Dwayne Smith has just uh, come back. He did very well in the IPL. And let me tell you, he really hits the ball long and hard. So we have lots of batting ability there. And then they are supported by the bowlers. Fidel Edwards with lots of pace uh, and bounce and uh, you know a lot of aggro into him. And then they have Ravi Rampal, who's a much improved bowler now. Bowls very well in the one-day the one versions of the game. I mean the, the limited versions of the game. And then uh, they have some... Uh, uh, military medium pace bowlers who can really strike a good line and length like Dwayne Smith can just uh, uh, probably uh, bowl his uh, dibbly doblies and then um, uh, Dwayne Bravo will be bowling his uh, medium pace Darren Sammy captain himself will be bowling pace and then um, uh, Darren Bravo is back now Darren Bravo you know, is a very attacking batsman he has been uh, a bit um, outside because of injury but uh, let me tell you Darren Bravo brings a lot of variety into the team and he can play some marvelous strokes he's a very good player to watch and the Bravo brothers is another one which is going to strengthen this West Indian team because they, are, or they, have, they have been getting the victories without these two persons in the team. So uh, if, you, if you predominantly look at it, but with Dwayne Bravo, the Bravo brothers into the mix, I think the West Indies uh, team is absolutely all the most strengthened. Johnson Charles is a very good, uh, he's an opener and he likes to get on with the game, play his strokes and he's good to watch. Uh, and then uh, we have Dinesh Ramadin, the wicket keeper. I'm sure he would be longing to play a good one here. And all around as we already spoken about, Andre Russell, you know, he can be used as a, I mean, he can be just promoted and told to just uh, go berserk. He can do that. He really likes to hit the ball hard. Marlon Samuels, another classic player, but he can really unveil some very, very big strokes if needed. And then uh, Lennel Simmons is also a very good blacksman. Wayne Smith, we've already spoken about. And uh, I think this version is mixed. And also Sunil Narin, let's not forget the emerging player of the year. Yesterday he was in the ICC um, 2012 Emerging Player of the Year and let me tell you his bowling is going to be the key because if the batsman can pick him up that is going to be important and initially I think certain teams which have played him will be able to pick him up like Australia who played him last or other teams but whether all the teams I mean uh, whether all the teams could really really pick him up that is going to be the key and I think Sunil Narin will play a great role in the Steve 20 World Cup uh, because um, uh, he, he is the one who is going to throttle the runs and make it all the more uh, you know, tough for the batsmen, uh, getting them into frustration and leading into some uh, you know, injudicious strokes 
and then uh, the bowlers take over because once a bowler bowls well the other bowler really capitalizes that's what really happens the pressure builds on and the batsman go and strike, uh, strike, uh, try, uh, try striking the other bowlers uh, just to get the ascendancy but in the in the process they lose the wickets now uh, West Indies uh, uh, I mean they are definitely content there's no doubt about it absolute content and Chris Gale you know what he can do he can really really tear the attack apart and he's the most most dangerous bat batsman as far as the T20 World Cup is concerned. So I think West Indies are good. And also one more person is there. It's Samuel Badri, the right arm leggy into the team. So he is also there in the team. So it will be good to see how he goes. So uh, West Indies, uh, in my opinion, look uh, real uh, strong contenders. Uh, the reason being uh, they have lots of variety, lots of all-rounders. Uh, they let be a very good captain. And of late, uh, they have smelled success. Whether they're going to do that, that, that is something uh, which, is, which needs to be answered in this T20 World Cup. Because a lot of people uh, have been keeping their faith and uh, uh, telling that West Indies are the ones who are looking strong favorites. Well, they're definitely looking, but I wouldn't say firm favorites, but definitely they are not going to be easy for the other teams. And um, look, I mean, uh, we'll have to wait and see. As far as Ireland are concerned, uh, they have also said qualifiers. William Porterfield is the captain. He's in some good form uh, in the English county scene. Ed Joyce. Then they have Andrew White, who plays as an all-rounder, the right-hand bat and the right-arm off-break bowler. Now, Stuart Thompson is the new guy who's coming to the team. Uh, I'm told he's an all-rounder. He's only 21 years of age. Uh, he uh, bats left-handed and uh, uh, bowls right-arm medium-fast bowling. And uh, Max Sorensen, might not, we, we might have not heard much about him, but Max Sorensen is a very good bowler. Uh, he, he operates in tandem with uh, Boyd Rankin, so that would be good to see. Boyd Rankin, as you know, uh, probably might shift his allegiance to England, so it would be good to see how Boyd Rankin does for his team in this T20 World Cup. And Boyd Rankin and Max Sorensen could, should make a good pair, and they should also provide the breakthroughs. Paul Sterling is one of those talented Ireland batsmen who has been doing well on the English county circuit, and he's only 20 years of age, and let me tell you, he's a real, real talent. He also bowled right arm off break bowling, and uh, he can also, at times, really, really uh, take the uh, take the attack apart. But uh, he can he, take, he can take it by the scruff of the neck. Uh, then the Bryan brothers, uh, Kevin O'Brien, you know what he can do. Uh, holds the record for the fastest century in 50 overs, one day internationals in the World Cup. He did that, you know. And he's partnered by. I mean, he has his brother Neil O'Brien, who's also a wonderful batsman. He's also the wicketkeeper of the team. And they have another new ba batsman by the name Neil Jones. He's just 30 years of age, right arm bat and right arm medium fast bowler. Trent Johnston is a very, very experienced bloke who plays for them. He's been playing for, for them for quite a long time. He's a very, very useful right arm bat and also right arm fast medium bowler. And then look out for George Docker, the left arm spinner, who has been doing well in the English county. So he's just 20 years of age. Lots of long way to go for George Docker, but he's a real, real talent. Another sheer talent coming in from Ireland, right arm bat. Uh, and is the main thing is his slow left arm orthodox bowling both superbly and then they have uh, Alex Cusack Alex Cusack is a right hand batter right arm medium fast bowler Gary Wilson is another wicket keeper that they have so they have two wicket keepers Gary Wilson and Niall O'Brien and Tim Murtag as you know in English County he has been making waves he has done a wonderful job in 2012 and he gets his chance for Ireland and I'm sure he would like to take it with both hands left hand batter right arm fast medium and Ireland I think they are much improved team and uh, whether they could prove, a, uh, they could uh, throw a surprise in this T20 World Cup remains to be seen. But dear fans, friends, and subscribers, this brings me and uh, brings an end uh, to my first cricket show today. Uh, I mean, um, previewing the Group B teams in this T20 World Cup 2012. Um, just stay there. I'll be back with the next um, preview of the World Cup uh, T20 World Cup, and that would be Group C. Until then, it's goodbye from your host Ram. Thank you.